My name is Alessandro De Maria, I'm uh, head of SRE at uh, Synthase, a company doing a, uh, developing a software for uh, helping biotech companies develop their processes, their biology experiment faster. Um, at DeepMind, which is my previous company, I also helped uh, founded the uh, Capitan project, which is a tool that helps um, configuration uh, management of uh, any sort of resources. Mainly, we use it mostly for Kubernetes, uh, which is what the, this talk would be, uh, would be about. But uh, we can also, and this is also to answer some questions I've seen around, we also use uh, the exact same tool to manage uh, Terraform and other uh, processes that can be like pipelines or Spinnaker or Argo CD or anything in, in, in the middle. So really it's quite generic and I'll try to uh, talk a little bit about it, but want to focus on uh, 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 kind of another product we've uh, just uh, released through the Capitan uh, kind of tooling, which is uh, Tesoro, which is uh, going to help you manage uh, secrets end-to-end uh, -end from, from where you generate them all the way to where you start using them. So I'll share some, um, some uh, presentation now and uh, I will um, uh, follow up with a demo so we can see a bit more uh, with, with, with a clear example how Tesoro works in this case and how it makes uh, our deployment much more secure and much quicker. So I'll be sharing the presentation now. Um, hopefully everybody can see it. Uh, let me see if I... Okay, so um, as I said, Tesoro is, uh, is uh, the last uh, uh, tool we've uh, we created uh, under the Capitan project. It's basically a webhook admission controller for secret management. A webhook admission controller for those who are not uh, uh, aware of uh, what, how it works. It's basically a component you can install on your uh, Kubernetes cluster that will uh, intercept a request to create new configuration of Kubernetes and do something uh, with, with those requests. So for instance, Istio uses the exact same approach to inject um, the um, Istio proxy uh, transparently when you apply a new deployment. We use it for converting uh, Capitan uh, secrets into uh, into the actual content of the secret so that uh, this kind of uh, decryption happens at a later stage in the cluster and uh, the secret stays unencrypted for the whole uh, time while it travels to your cluster. So um, I cannot unfortunately uh, introduce uh, Tesoro without first mentioning about uh, Capitan as a project uh, because it's a, it's a, it's a a uh, project we've been working on uh, since 2017 and uh, and obviously this this tool that we developed as Oro is intended to be used together with Capitan. So uh, Capitan allows you to uh, create templates for any sort of a configuration, mainly as I said, mainly uh, Kubernetes objects, um, but any sort of a configuration file um, and uses allows you uh, to uh, mix and use whichever of these kind of uh, templating engine you prefer. So you can use JSONet, which is like a language for creating, generating uh, JSON uh, and YAML data, uh, Jinja. We can use also uh, Helm. So we can uh, leverage from um, libraries are, um, so from charts already out there and allows you to deliver, uh, to deliver them using Capitan. And also we can use a tool called, uh, a language we've developed internally called a Cadet, which is the, uh, based on Python, which allows you to basically do exactly the same, so generate new, new uh, re Kubernetes resources or any other kind of file resource that you want to have. So it's usable, it's suitable for anything, uh, starting from uh, um, Kubernetes uh, configuration to Terraform to Spinnaker, but you could also uh, use it for generating compliance kind of a, a based on a, a config files that are used somewhere else just to uh, follow up on, on the previous uh, kind of conversation, the, the previous presentation. We use it also for generating like documentation so that the documentation that we produce when we, when we create a new resource matches exactly what uh, the, the, uh, the actual um, um, application we are deploying um, uh, is like. So you can make playbooks that are specific to a, 
uh, to a deployment with all the right information that comes right directly from, from that deployment. So in, in, a, in a very short, uh, I mean, I only have 20 minutes, so I'll go as quickly as I can. But it, it, ideally what you have with Capitani is that you have a, some data, so a, a source of uh, truth coming from a structured um, uh, set of data we call the inventory. Uh, and then we pass that data, we compile that data, we create like the, the inventory for a project. We pass that data through all the different templates and going through those templates makes you generate all the different kinds of files that you may want to use for, for your application or for whatever other configurations you have. Um, yeah, so uh, to make uh, things a little bit easier, uh, this is also, I think, the last Capitan uh, uh, thing only that I will mention in this talk. Uh, we've uh, gone through the process of creating what we call manifest generators, which means that um, it's a, a, a super quick, super intuitive way of uh, creating new um, configurations for Kubernetes deployment in this case, by uh, starting from a very, um, very kind of simple uh, definition in, inside the inventory. So as you can see here, um, I will be using this component called the echo, what they call the echo server, which is based on uh, this uh, very nice image that it can be found on, uh, on the Docker Hub. All it does is just start a simple uh, service. But by defining a configuration like this, where I just uh, give, give it uh, the name of the, let me see if I can put a pointer here. Yes, by defining the the name of the component, the image this component will use, and variables or port definition, by defining this kind of configuration on the inventory, the generator, the generator using a sort of a universal templating system will generate all the configuration for uh, Kubernetes for me. So to use, uh, because most of you will be uh, probably more familiar with Helm, with Helm, if you have like uh, 20 components, pretty much you need to, uh, even if, especially if they are of different kind of uh, types with different kind of uh, uh, functionalities, you will end up with 20 different uh, charts. Uh, and maintaining all, all those kind of uh, charts because they, it's impossible to share, uh, to seemingly share uh, kind of um, uh, templating features across all of them will become extremely uh, difficult to, to, to manage all of that. So using a generator, a uh, Capitan generator allows you to share lots of the logic of how to generate these charts. It's like literally an, a universal chart, but just defining uh, the configuration, you actually get uh, the images being produced. So this is as much as I will be saying about Capitan or anything else, you can join us in, uh, in our channel uh, or you can read the blog, uh, which I will mention after. Um, the only thing I want, to, uh, what I want to talk now is about how we deal, we solve also the problem of uh, secret management. So um, other solutions uh, out there uh, don't have a native way of dealing with how you store secrets in your um, in your configuration or in your kind of uh, um, within your uh, um, deployments. So uh, most of the time, especially I think with uh, with Helm, you uh, which I'm not uh, enormously uh, um, expert on because clearly I don't, I don't use it. Uh, but I think you, you rely on uh, uh, third-party tools like Gitcrypt. I've seen some people using Git, Gitcrypt or uh, Vault, uh, perhaps to uh, store some part of the uh, secrets that you want to keep within, within your deployment to, to follow your deployment. Capitan, on the other hand, offers you a first-class support for what we call references because we, the use we have is a bit more generic. Uh, but in, uh, in practice, it's basically we, most of them use it to store um, secret content, so like a password, a certificate, or so on. Um, so the way it works is that you would define secret uh, with, the, with the following syntax. You would choose the backend you want your secret to be uh, kind of uh, encrypted or stored uh, against. You would define um, a path for, of, uh, you know, a, a reference, like a file reference for the secret you want, like an identification for the secret you want to handle. And then you can pass some functions, um, which I, I will explain in a second what these functions are. So starting from the backends, uh, you can already see that it gives you a very good kind of a set of uh, 
uh, features uh, straight out of the box. So you can use uh, the plain backend, which is very helpful during kind of a, just a day and also just for um, um, in inserting kind of a values that are um, where you just want to decouple that value base, not actually a true uh, uh, secret. Uh, basic C4, uh, same as plain, um, and then you have like proper encryption, kind of a proper kind of secure storage, like you can use uh, Google KMS, AWS KMS, you can use Vault, or uh, in a particular situation, you might decide to just use plain old uh, GPG for encrypting your secrets. Uh, functions, on the other hand, which is something that you add uh, 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 after the definition of the old secret tag, allows you, gives you the opportunity to, to somehow auto-generate uh, secrets in some situation where uh, you, if you want, just want a password, you actually don't want to generate it on uh, www.password.com and then cut and paste into your terminal. You just want uh, Capitan to, to generate a, a secure password for you and, uh, and store it. So literally you will never ever see that password until you, you actually have to reveal it for some other reason. Uh, it, it greatly simplifying the process of uh, bootstrapping kind of uh, new configurations because you can uh, embed uh, the instruction of how to create the secret right into um, into the definition in this case uh, secret definition. So here is a couple of examples. Um, in uh, in the definition of a component, I could say that I want a base sixty four type of secret, which I repeat is not. It's not a secret per se, in this case, it's just a, a reference, an external reference to a value. Uh, we can use um, uh, a path, which is, it, it can be a path that is specific to, um, to, the, to the target we are operating within, and then the ID for the secret. So in this case, just two random uh, secrets, one called password and one called uh, JKMS secret. Uh, the functions on the end, random string, allows me to bootstrap the content of a secret by providing uh, basically a, a random uh, string for me, so like a random password. And then the base 64 instructions at the end allows me to convert that into a base 64 type of secret in case I want to embed it directly into, into the secret, into a secret object, or if they need to go through uh, some other kind of uh, processing. And as you can see here in the first part, uh, I, can, I, I can use Base64 or JKMS, so I can even uh, mix different kind of uh, uh, backend configurations uh, for secrets, uh, depending on how, how, uh, how you know, the, the specific project I'm working on uh, requires it. Um, another use that you can do with, uh, with Capitan Secrets is that you can actually uh, uh, generate, create the secret content by feeding a file directly from the command line. So in this case, I'm generating a secret called GKMS my secret, and I'm passing a, a file as a reference, and I say that I want this file to be basic C4 encrypted again. This is the command I ran uh, earlier today to uh, uh, convert a, um, a Google uh, service account uh, file into a secret so that I could make it available to the, for the rest of the demo so you can uh, you will be able to see this in action. And you can see more, uh, you can read more about Capitan and about secrets in the Capitan blog. I think I've, I've gone as fast as I could and I think I can get, get to finally talk about Tesoro. So Tesoro is a, as I said, a web hook for Kubernetes that intersects the request to generate a new secret uh, and transparently replace your secret tags with the actual content that you supply. So if you ha are familiar with, um, with the sealed secrets from um, uh, Bitnami, uh, I think, um, with seal secret, the, uh, the approach is exactly the same. And in fact, I've been using a seal secret up until the server was available. The difference in this case is that first of all, it's uh, 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 compatible with Capitan. So it's much more convenient for me to use Tesoro nat natively rather than having to go through the conversion step from uh, uh, the Capitan generated secrets uh, back into seal secret. But it also has the advantage of including GKMS and AWS KMS, which is not as far as I know, available on CL, CL Secret yet. Not for any um, technical challenges, just uh, I think the, the, the progress of the, the, the project hasn't uh, gone there uh, yet. Um, 
the same thing as the uh, seal secret the, the crypt secret the secret directly in, in the cluster so it's exactly the same approach the, the main difference here is that uh, while seal secret uh, take a, a, a seal secret kind of type of object converts into a secret we actually do it transparently to any kind of uh, Kubernetes object that have specific labels enabled. So uh, we can uh, support uh, uh, handling a secret uh, baked into a config map or in, in directly into a deployment. So this is, I think, is quite fascinating because it means that in some cases where, uh, where you have, uh, unfortunately, have to have a config map with uh, inside a, a specific kind of uh, secret that, that is very difficult because your application perhaps doesn't accept it taken from anywhere else, uh, Tesoro can help you there because it will translate that config map right directly into a, a um, as it goes through the Kubernetes API will be turned into a um, into the actual secret. Um, huge improvement is the fact that uh, your CI CD software doesn't need to know the key to the cryptic secrets and doesn't need to know Tesoro is actually installed there at all. So it's completely transparent to, to your processes and it can be um, uh, integrated with anything you have out, out there. This is another uh, huge um, improvement over other solution because for instance, we're we using uh, Spinnaker. Spinnaker does not natively support um, secrets, uh, sealed secrets objects. Uh, so it's a bit more uh, difficult to in integrate. We had to do lots of work to, to make sure that the secret versioning feature that normally Spinnaker would have would work also on sealed secret. Well, Tesoro basically works transparently uh, uh, in this case. Um, this is basically explaining um, how the um, decryption work. I, I think I, I said it already a little bit. Uh, but basically, you would have the compiled manifest, which embed inside this uh, manifest, you embed the encrypted form of your secret. And as you send them to your Kubernetes cluster, your uh, Tesoro kind of controller uh, will uh, decrypt it and create the actual resource that you are uh, interested in. Uh, if there is an integration with the KMS, in this case, uh, this is the symbol of the Google KMS, um, Tesoro will uh, talk to the Google KMS, it will be the only component that technically needs to have access to your secret, will fetch the, the key and uh, will uh, use it to decrypt your secrets. Um, same would work with the AWS and with Vault or with any other sub, um, supported backend that we have, with more coming every day, every month. Um, the other option, which is what we were doing up until Tesoro was available, is that you still have the option to um, uh, decrypt secrets by using the normal Capitan uh, reveal flow. So the Capitan tool provided you have access to the uh, KMS uh, secrets through your Google credentials, you will be able to uh, decrypt it uh, while you are applying. So just a bit before it gets pushed to the, to the API. Uh, but this would mean that your, uh, the people operating with, the, with this kind of uh, components would, or even your CI would need to have access to the secret. So by using, um, Tesoro, you're actually shifting that kind of responsibility uh, to something that is on the cluster, which is meant to be a bit more secure than, uh, than uh, 20 laptops from, uh, from all your uh, team members. Um, I'll try to understand how are we with uh, time. I don't know if uh, somebody can give me a hint how much time I have. And uh, I will uh, uh, basically start the... Um, uh, the kind of little demo that I have uh, prepared for, for today. So um, here is, uh, I'm using a, um, just a Git repo, Capitan reference that you can download from the Capicorp uh, Git uh, repository. And uh, what I'm, I'm going to do is uh, show you a very basic example of what happens when you operate with, Capi with Capitan. So if I run uh, Capitan compile, what it does, it's, this is, uh, in this case, it won't produce anything uh, particularly exciting. But it's useful to show you uh, in this kind of configuration how many uh, uh, example kind of targets we have configured. So uh, targets is a way to define the main configuration for your Capitan uh, deployment that you want to deal with. So you can see that we have uh, one target called Capita Capicorp Tesoro, and then uh, you will, we will have another one called um, Example Tutorial, which is the other one that we'll be using today. 
uh, if you open the uh, file that defines how this um, um, this example are, are meant to be deployed, and if I open the Tesoro configuration, I can see the configuration here is very basic. You will not be able to get it by just looking at it right now, because it's uh, uh, unfortunately requires you to understand how um, Capitan works. But in, in essence, what we are doing here is that I, I say that I want to deploy the com component called Capicorp Tesoro onto a local cluster, which is a type kind. So this is just a way to, for me to refer to, um, to configurations this way. So if I uh, um, now want to operate on that specific uh, compile file, if I look at the uh, compile file here under uh, the Tesoro uh, definition, Hi Alessandro, sorry to interrupt. Um, I don't think we can see your demo screen, I'm afraid. Oh, okay. Just <laughs> <laughs> uh, give me a second. Okay, I'll have to start again unless you can understand exactly. Can you see it now? Yeah, perfect. Uh, how am I with time? Do I have time or? Um, yeah, we've still got a few people um, that are tuned in that haven't had to rush back to the remote working. So, yeah, do you demo. Okay, fair enough. So, uh, sorry for that. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll go through that again. So, if I run um, Capitan Compile, um, here I can see that Capitan goes through all my configurations and recompiles them. Uh, this is a fully GitOps. So, whatever you've seen before, this is Capitan is the right tool that you need to uh, to allow you to, to achieve your GitOps uh, setup. What happens is when I run a, a compile, it generates a files into the uh, compiled for, for folder, uh, which you can see here, these are all the files that get generated by, by all the different kind of uh, targets I have defined. So in specific, we, we are going to look at the, uh, the one generated by the uh, Tesoro uh, target, which is uh, here is basically the, um, the manifest, the documentation, and other kind of scripts that are supporting this, this deployment. And we will look at the, um, the uh, tutorial one, which is pretty much the same. I'm using here uh, the echo server uh, as an example to uh, deploy onto, um, onto the cluster. So I, I have deployed a local kind cluster. So it, this is a Kubernetes in, in Docker kind of setup. So if I uh, were, if I now run, and this is the process that uh, we'll be able to uh, to um, to do pretty much everywhere. The, the approach is always the same. If I run uh, Tesoro scripts apply, what this what this hap what here happens is that uh, the script apply will uh, inject the configuration for uh, Tesoro right into the cluster that I have defined, my kind cluster, which is something that uh, I could show you how to set it up from scratch, but I don't think I want to uh, go through um, uh, all that. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time. Um, by running this command, I've deployed Tesoro of my cluster. I can now do exactly the same by running uh, the uh, tutorial scripts apply. As you can see, the I don't have to actually specify where to change my context. I don't have to know where the cluster is. I don't need to know whether the cluster is a kind cluster or is an actual GK cluster. Uh, this, uh, the Capitan allows me to hide all that complexity. And by just running apply again, hopefully, uh, the, uh, the deployment will be uh, um, pushed to, to, the, to the cluster. I can confirm that uh, by doing uh, kube control get pods. Uh, you will see that I've been lying to you all around because uh, the actual components are already running. But this is if I if I were to uh, delete the deployment, uh, do it again. So I can see that uh, pods are terminating. If I were to apply apply again you would see that uh, it's actually, it was just a, a convenience uh, setup. Um, now, in the configuration of the echo server, I defined like, some secrets. So if you look inventory classes, components, which I'm going to the definition of the echo server itself, you can see here that I have uh, this secret called M secret. 
And I have it defined as uh, a GKMS type secret that has a random string being generated. So what I would expect now is that by applying uh, the secret, I would be able to see the, uh, the secret being revealed straight into the deployment. So let's see if that's true. And I will basically, um, for convenience, uh, edit this pod and try to go to the, um, the place where the secret uh, is defined. As you can see, the, uh, the content of the secret, a randomly generated secret that I had uh, defined uh, in, in that the secret tag, gets automatically um, extracted and inserted right into the uh, deployment object and uh, up all the way into the pod object. I am not saying that this is the right uh, pattern you should use <laughs> in this specific case, but it could be helpful in, in any case, in other cases where you don't want to go through an intermediate secret. Also, uh, the secrets, that was more to show you that this kind of approach work, works on uh, uh, all sorts of uh, um, uh, Kubernetes resources, including resources that are not strictly secrets. Uh, secrets will go through exactly the same process. So if you look here, we have an echo server uh, secret, Kubernetes secret, which gets uh, also created automatically and uh, managed by uh, Tesoro. And the content of it will be the uh, decrypted form of whatever we have defined in, uh, in, the, in the secret definition, which is uh, basically the, this content here that I can see here. Basically, I've created three values, encoded secret, better secret, and Google KMS secret, just as a random example. And if we were to... Um, to get the, uh, the secret and uh, um, basically uh, show you the content. Oh, da, 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 da. And this is basically the, uh, the basic C4 version of, uh, of it. Uh, I will not go through the, um, to the decryption of uh, the, 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 the decoding side of things because I think I'm quite short on time and uh, be willing to accept uh, uh, questions if you have any. Okay, let's, let's see. So we have one question saying, Alessandro, do you ever envision Capitan becoming a Kubernetes CRD? Would this offer the project any benefits? Um, uh, this is something that uh, I think we've uh, we've always been um, extremely uh, strong on not making Capitan a Kubernetes uh, only kind of a product because we see the benefit of it in in many other uh, kind of um, uh, areas. So there are people using it for Spinnaker pipelines, people using it for Terraform, uh, and so on. Um, it would depend on on what kind of a uh, 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 you know, things we're trying to achieve. Uh, Tesoro is a first step towards a more cloud native kind of uh, uh, Kubernetes um, um, support, uh, uh, Kubernetes native support, that's what I mean. And uh, there might be cases in which we might want to push uh, a template and have it generated uh, directly on, uh, on, the, uh, on, on Kubernetes. We are more, uh, uh, we're fond of uh, uh, having everything kind of uh, happening offline. So it enables a much stronger GitOps kind of approach because the configurations that you see um, and you store on your Git are exactly what ends up happening on the cluster. There is no CRD magic happening in the middle. I think Tesoro is the only place where we draw uh, a line just to uh, simplify that part of security. Okay. There is an anonymous uh, question there that I think it might be better if you type a response, but the last question I'd like to read out is, where can I see instructions to install Tesoro? Uh, yes, so this is, uh, um, um, the instruction are on uh, uh, the Tesoro GitHub repository. So if you go on uh, Capicorp uh, Tesoro, I, will, I, will, I think I will share it uh, later on, on uh, if there is like a follow-up uh, meeting. Uh, but it's um, um, it's on the Capicorp uh, Tesoro repository, and also if you use the Capicorp uh, 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 repository, the Capitan re reference repository on Capicorp, which is where we're trying to bundle all the information and all the best practice for um, uh, Capitan and, and Tesoro, you will be able to find all the instructions there. So you will be able to run a very similar demo to what I've done right now. Okay, 
Brilliant, thank you. Um, I'm just going to share my screen real quick. Um, actually, I will just leave this webinar running for the next five minutes um, in case you wanna answer any more questions. Um, and then we will be sharing recordings of the webinar along with any links um, and presentations as early as tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming on your lunch. Very much appreciated. This is the first one we have ran at 12.30. So let us know your thoughts on it. Do you prefer it over the evening ones um, or would you like to stick to the 5.30 start? Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll see you all again soon. Um, so uh, meanwhile, I'll uh, just take the on your offer and uh, reply to the uh, question that was um, asked before. Um, so the question was, uh, does the reference to the, I'm trying to look for, yeah, is the reference to the KMS key or key ring uh, to use uh, um, uh, contained in the, file in the file source file, like uh, Mozilla SOPS does, or, does, or do you need to provide a reference as an external config item? Uh, and if so, do all secrets have this, uh, to use the same key, uh, key ring? Uh, so the um, the answer is that uh, we um, uh, to support the Tesoro <coughs> use case we actually have um, um, provided a, a very similar approach to what uh, you suggested Mozilla SOP. So we embed the secret, including the key that uh, refers to the uh, secret, uh, into the um, uh, compiled file, and uh, you will be able. At the moment, uh, we have a limitation that each. Um, um, each uh, um, target uh, will share the same uh, key 